Hi there folks, my name's Novawain24 and welcome to a review of a different kind. So today we are here, now normally you sort of come from me and you see sort of with these kind of views you probably be imagining that I'd be looking at reviewing scenery, but no, I am not reviewing scenery, well at least perhaps not a fixed piece of scenery. So we are here today having a look at the early access version of Just, Just Flight's Traffic Global. Now, um, before we get too far into this, I do want to say um, that, as I said, this is an early access review. So this is, uh, this is currently um, the version is currently at the start of July 2018. So we are having a look at this one at the moment, uh, having a look at where it's at and uh, where we are uh, hope to, where, where there's some hope of where it will actually end up going to as well. Um, so yeah, I just do want to stress that this is an early access review. So there are going to be some bugs we are going to see and a few uh, sort of uh, glitches and things we're going to see, but uh, we'll cover those off as we go on. But I do want to say, also say, Thank you very much to the team over at Just Flight for providing me with the review copy uh, to bring this to you. We can have a look and we'll have a look at the exploration. Now, why is AI traffic so important? Now, that's a it's a it's a mixed thing. Some people like it, some people swear by it, some people love it, some people hate it. But one of the deep things about the experience and the tagline that Microsoft had for so long with their FSX and the ESP SIM, or the FSX SIM, was the fact that it was as real as it got. And the fact was is that it included things like actual a living world. Um, X-Plane 11, um, as much as uh, I feel it's come, it definitely come, uh, like X-Plane, especially with X-Plane 11, has come a long way um, over the last few years. It, it still doesn't necessarily have, it's got some aspects of a living world, but it's still missing, um, uh, at least not without uh, adding in uh, third party sort of custom add-ons. Uh, it's sort of missing the AI traffic. Now, of course, uh, FSX uh, and uh, and Prepared have AI traffic built in, um, but it is sort of, you know, fictional airlines and not necessarily things. Now, if you want to get real world sort of schedules and real world airlines, as we're seeing here, then you sort of have to look for third party things. Now, Just Flight have got quite the pedigree um, of actually doing um, a, a range of excellent AI traffic add-ons over the years. Uh, and of course, Traffic Global is simply the, is the latest version um, of that and uh, bringing it to life uh, in our simulated world. So we're going to be having a look and so, so why is this? I just want to cover off why it's so important, the fact that, you know, we have that interaction, we have that um, living world, as it were. And I said, it's, it's a key part of what makes, uh, a key part of that immersiveness in a sim I feel so. I think it's a it's a great ability to cover this off and have a look at it and, and go from there. So hmm, there you go. So what we're going to be doing we're going to be doing this one today as a breaking it down. We're going to be going back to actually before all this stuff appears in our sim. We're going to be going through the install process, um, how to set up Traffic Global for your sim, uh, and it is fully compatible with the ESP range of sims as well. So it gives quite a quite a bit of choice. And then we're going to come back uh, and see how it works and integrates it into our sim, and then we're going to go through some. Uh, final thoughts as we uh, end out the review here. So, all right, so without uh, without too much further ado, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, now uh, leave here. We're going to leave uh, here the beautiful uh, surrounds of, uh, of Chicago International, and we're going to uh, head back to our desktop and uh, go back to where it all begins. All right, so uh, as I said, let's go back to the beginning and actually let's get this installed. So we're going back um, before we've got anything installed, we're gonna get to uh, as a brand new version now. Again, as I said, I wanna stress through this, this is early access version. So the installer is pretty basic stuff that we've all seen before, blah, blah, blah. Now, here's the cool part. Um, actually putting where you want to install it. Now, you don't have to install it in the sim, and in fact, you do not act, do not put it inside your sim. Um, you wanna put it somewhere else and somewhere different. You get a couple of different options to install. I put mine in a separate file on a separate drive, just for that, and there's two choices you make. The first one that we've made was the actual core files, and the second one is the fleet. The fleet is huge. As you saw, it's four and a half gig. It's massive, and this fleet is still growing. It's still in early access. So there's a lot of content here, a lot of stuff that's going to be coming through. You've got the core application, all the tools that it needs to actually be able to sort of write AFCAD files and uh, actually compile the traffic as well as the actual uh, AI aircraft itself as well as um, a few other things that we're going to have a look at in a moment as well. So the great thing is, is that we have the option of you install this somewhere else. You don't actually install this in your sim. Now there's a couple of extra things that you need to be aware of while this is you know, installing itself in the background. 
Um, as you saw, I choose uh, somewhere. So I've got a, I've just got one of my spared, one of my drives. I simply put all the content goes into that one. Now, something else that what it also does is that it gives you the option to uh, then install the fleet somewhere else again. Um, I put that in the same drive, but you can put it literally anywhere you like. It the defaults to suggest to put it into your My Documents folder. Um, I deliberately don't do that because I want to keep track of where all my AI is, uh, so I don't do that. But it will still put content into your My Documents folder. Um, and we're going to go through some of the stuff that we'll do once we've actually gone through the install here. Um, the main thing that sort of goes into the um, My Documents folder once it's actually installed is actually things like the, is, is the, like the user guide, the manual, um, as well as uh, the schedules and a couple of the database files that it references. So the core stuff goes in where you tell it to install the fleet goes to tell it to install to where you want it to install but some of the uh, core stuff does still go in the documents folder um, personally I kind of don't like that bit I think that it should simply go into where you want to install it um, um, but again that is possibly going to change as the development continues to evolve like a lot of things have already changed like I said this is still very much an early access product so things are going to change bearing that in mind all right, so this is all sort of wrapping up and continuing on in the background. So uh, now that it, now that that's uh, everything's now wrapped up. All right, so with everything now installed, we could do finish all good, and we are right to launch the application. Now it does launch itself straight away. I'll give you straight in. Now pretty basic sort of setup here. Um, now one of the things that I do want to point out is that once it does actually open it goes through this initial setup with it wizard. So it goes through and has a look. These are the similar platforms of plan of the fan of the PC. It says would you like to configure you actually just need to select there and go forth. Now um, it will populate your FSX and FSX Steam edition as the same thing or good. The cool part I noticed was the fact that Flight Sim World appears here. Now that's really interesting. Now I've checked with the developer and this stage apparently is that um, it doesn't support Flight Sim World at the moment. It does support um, but it, they are intending to have it support it in the future. Um, I've simply gone through and dis disabled the box function because the Steam edition is the only one I've got there put there click start off you go all done now what this particular thing does right now um, is it goes through a couple of background things as well it adds for prepared v4 it adds a couple of things like links it in with the actual um, sort of add-ons XML uh, and but it, the other thing it does do and this is something that I'm not so happy about at the moment is it automatically goes through and disables the default traffic of any sim that you had set up there so not too happy about that, but that's what it does. That's what it does initially. Uh, once you've done that, it's initially set up. Now the best thing I recommend to do is to actually, before you do anything else, close the application and restart it. So uh, we're going to go and do that now. Okay. So once we've restarted it, it then actually sort of confirms its integration status. You notice they were all red X's before. Now they're green ticks to show where it's ticked in. Again, even though I didn't connect it to box, it's still saying it's connected to box because I've only got one installed. I'm assuming. I don't know, but yeah, again, bit of a weird one, that one. Moving on. But as I said, it's got the main connections there showing it's connected to my prepared version 3 and 4 and to my FSX, all good. All right. Couple of things to point out and to note. Um, now, before you get started, you can't sort of just install it and then just go and there'll be AI. That doesn't work. There's a few things, you. there's a few steps you need to do first. Um, so probably what we're going to do is that I'll show you how to build your sort of initial traffic file and then once we've done that then I'll sort of go through some of the more detailed things and then we'll, might, then we'll sort of round it off by jumping back into the sim. Alright, so first thing that we do is that we've all started all launched. One bugbear I'm actually going to get out of the way right now um, is actually the, the home tab here. Um, so the home tab here, uh, so if you go through and actually sort of, you know, open up anything here, okay, it opens up in a new tab along here and you can sort of switch back among tabs, yep, all good, close it, you can just reopen it again, all fine, no worries, except if you close the home tab. Not that there's a great deal on the home tab, it's sort of just a, a basic sort of change log of showing what's, uh, what the different versions have up here and a copy of the manual. So there's not a huge amount of stuff on here, um, so that's not a you know, doesn't seem like a huge issue, but it's just annoying that you can't actually, if you do accidentally close that, the only way to reopen this is to actually relaunch the application again. So that's a little annoying, just saying. So anyway. Um, all right, but if you want to get traffic into your sim, and this is probably the, the big thing that sort of gets uh, people out of the way first, 
So the first thing to do is that you need to click on default database. Now, well, I think you're thinking, what has that got to do default? But I'm not using default traffic. I want to use, you know, actual traffic. Um, well, that's fine because default database refers to um, the glo traffic globals default database. Um, so essentially, what it does is it lists a whole is it's got a whole heap of airlines sort of done here traffic database. It's huge amount of stuff in here and they're growing all the time um, as we saw back on the home tab at the moment um, there is sort of you know this amount of AI available like we're talking over 53,000 flights in over 15 over 1500 AI aircraft like that's insane amount of stuff in here um, so yeah a couple of things on that one so these are all based on traffic schedules from a whole slew of airlines uh, sort of that are featured around the world um, of traffic schedules as they were at, during the early part of 2018, late 2017, from what I can tell. Um, please note that not all airlines are featured in here. Uh, not all airlines are here. They're just straight up, they're not. Um, now, Just Flight's gone through and said a few things about that. They've said that you know they they will have uh, there will be a lot of airlines here. They are still growing a number of airlines. Predominantly at the moment, it is very European and North American focused. Um, there are some Australian and Asian airlines, uh, Asian airlines destinations featured as well, but not as many. They are adding to those. South America is on the list to expand. South and Central America is also on the list to expand as well. Um, but as I said, primarily it is focused around North America and Europe. So. Um, and look, you know, uh, as I said, I, I'm grateful that they're committed to expanding to more content, more countries, and then to make it a true global product. Um, but they have also said that they will be sort of doing stuff as uh, including expansion packs down the pack, down the, down the track as well. Now, as well as airliner traffic, they do include um, GA traffic as well, and we'll see that in a momentarily when we start compiling stuff. Um, so although you don't see the GA traffic sort of listed here, it is actually featured there as well, and it leverages off the default models that actually ship with the various different simulators that you can actually compile the traffic for. Now, speaking with uh, the team at Just Flight, they have confirmed that the GA traffic that is built in it, it is already set for global traffic, so you will see that all over the world. Um, they will be including, so primarily it will be fixed wing aircraft. Um, they have pointed out that the helicopters they are currently working about including them, they don't know if they will or they won't, just simply because due to the limitations of AI helicopter behavior within the ESP platforms. Um, so they're sort of they are working on it they are looking at it but they haven't guaranteed whether they will or won't do it they haven't just haven't just flat out just haven't simply decided what they're doing yet at all um, at the moment as I said the schedules are looking uh, predominantly based around the end of sort of 2017 start of 2018 um, they have talked about that they will be offering updated schedules uh, for the airlines so once the product goes live they will be offering updated schedules for the featured airlines um, as time goes on as period period periodic updates um, so bear in mind as well this is not the same as um, there is a um, a couple of other traffic packs at the moment including uh, UT Live and PSX Secon traffic. Now, um, PSX Secon traffic is an actual live traffic database, so that is actually pulled off ADSB data um, and is actually live or de delayed by I think it's about uh, I think it's about one minute or something, one or two minutes. Uh, but it is essentially live, whereas uh, UT Live isn't actually live. It's just simply up to date, you know, or relatively up to date um, schedules that then have an adaptive thing based on weather conditions and stuff like that. So um, I actually think that UT made a uh, Osprey traffic really made a bit of a mess up with that title because I think that that's BS I think it's actually you know, fraud but anyway that's a whole other issue we're not going to get into um, so yeah so there is that now um, one of the things that did feature about the original um, or the earlier traffic releases from Just Flight was that they did feature military traffic um, which is something that I did point out when I did cover uh, when I did sort of uh, uh, sort of note the in the first uh, release of Traffic Global that that was not that was noticeably not present now the Just Flight team have actually come back and responded to me with that, and they have said that they are planning. They haven't. They are looking at possibly planning and putting in AI, military AI traffic. They're not sure, but if they do, it will not be part of the core sim. Um, it would be done as part of an upgrade pack down the tr down the track. So um, great that they are considering it. 
mixed feelings about whether it's an upgrade pack or not. But then again, the guys over at MAIW do some wonderful work, and especially considering they're putting all their stuff to uh, prepared V4 at the moment is great to see. So, eh, mm, there you go. Um, the other interesting thing, fact as well, as I said um, before when we were doing the installation, was the fact that the you know, FSW is an int it is, they are intending to support Flight Sim World. Uh, so for those of us who still fly in Flight Sim World, we will also, uh, be seeing this traffic in our sims very soon as well. Uh, and there is also, um, they haven't ruled out to look uh, bring it over to X-Plane 11. They're focusing on getting it out for the ESP platforms first, and then they'll be looking at the possible feasibility of doing it in X-Plane. So uh, interesting uh, interesting little development there as well. That was almost thrown in as, as, a, uh, as an aside in the, uh, the, the discussions that I had with Duff Flight. So there you go. Could be pretty interesting for the future. Anyway, back to what we have in front of us. So, uh, as you're sort of scrolling there, we've got various different things here as well. Now, if you, what you can do is you can click on um, the actual sort of route, and it will actually give you information about uh, the route and where it's from and where it's going and stuff like that. It'll give you the idea of the code that you have. So like, for example, uh, it'll give you the fact that it's an aircraft code, so you can that's a A330-300 uh, series. Um, it gives you the flight number, the tail number that it would be telling to uh, the NSIM uh, ATC. Give you departure arrival airports of times density and also the density of traffic inside your sim where it will appear um, which is something pretty important as well so uh, obviously the lower the number the more likely it is to appear and uh, if you have to have traffic density i believe there is nothing in here above 97 percent um, of traffic so yeah you know so basically if you want to have everything up there you do but if you want to really fill your sim up with traffic you do have to push it up pretty damn high so just something to be aware of and as you can see there's a lot of different types of traffic that are coming in here as well so as i said there's an insane amount of stuff in here there really is it's just crazy anyway all right cool so that's this is pretty much it. So this is the default database so this is what ships with the product so these are all the different uh, all the flights and the, the airports and stuff like that uh, ship through the uh, sim uh, the ship with traffic global ready for you to put into your sim right how do we put it into our sim now as i said before when you first install traffic global it instantly disables default traffic so if you just installed it and didn't do what we're about to do now, you would not see any traffic. Um, and this is gonna be the same whether it's, um, I believe it's gonna be the same, yeah, this will be the same with it in the final, maybe the same final release version, I don't know, because again, as I said, this is early access, but compile traffic. So quick and simple and easy is simply click on compile traffic and go compile traffic database. Now, this now gives you some options to go from here. So you can go My AI Flights. So My AI Flights is a separate file where you can create and customize your own AI Flights. Um, we're going to skip over that one at the moment, uh, but we're just going to do uh, for the, um, the Traffic Global Airlines. Now, the user interface is a little clunky sometimes. Sometimes it needs a couple of clicks to actually uh, get stuff going, but there you go. Uh, all right, now it shows which sim do you want it to compile for. So we're going to compile for Prepared V4 today. Now again, as I said, the models that have been uh, that are shipping with this are fully compatible with the full ESP platform uh, spectrum. So F6, F6 Steam Edition, and prepared V1 through 4. So great to have. Uh, OS display, compile log, rescan airport data, always good to have this one on. Uh, so it actually rescans any um, or scenery changes and stuff like that you've had. And then in, uh, include GA traffic. So it produces a set of uh, a set of um, multiple sets of files. So essentially, it's, it produces a um, uh, a database, so give it a quick jump back up here. We saw there's part one, part two. So essentially it creates two um, traffic files, one based on airliners, airlines with the names uh, Ada, uh, Alpha to India, second one with Juliet to Zulu. Uh, it then also creates a um, GA traffic, uh, traffic file as well. Now the GA traffic is a bit less direct you can't really sort of you know you don't really sort of control a lot very much even though you literally sort of set your levels you go low low medium or high so you left click to bring it down right click to bring it up um, so yeah that's pretty much all you do that's it done all right and once you're ready uh, you then click compile so we're going to do that and that takes that can take a f quite a few minutes so uh, we'll uh, we'll click compile and then we'll come back once that's all done all right, so there we are, all done and complete. Now let's have a look. Now, the first thing that you'll see is you will see errors, errors everywhere. Okay, don't be alarmed um, because fundamentally, um, 
the, the, the fact is, is that no matter how you look at it, the database that's inside um, FSX and prepared is now 13 years old. There are a lot of airports that either now exist or now no longer exist that are featured inside its platform, which means that um, you'll have, or you'll have the simple fact that um, there are a lot of, of those 24 and a half thousand airports that are included in the prepared and in the ESP database. Um, there are a lot of them which don't have any parking. Um, they're simply the, especially um, airports in sort of, you know, China and um, South America and, and, and in Africa and the Middle East, is that all the airports consist of is the two runway start positions and maybe a fuel depot and maybe a fuel start. That's it. So when, of course, you're trying to set up uh, AI, it's trying to look for parking at both ends and it can't find it. So it just goes, so it throws out an error because it can't generate it. So a um, couple of things that you can do about it. You can either get really, really good uh, at creating um, uh, and editing uh, um, AFCAD files, so uh, airport files. Uh, there's a great editor, a free editor available there called um, called ADE uh, that I highly recommend to everybody. It's, very, it's actually a fairly quick and easy process to create parking if you want to do that. Um, or look for somebody who's already done some. Uh, there is, you know, there's lots of freeware airport updates available um, or potentially maybe look at payware update scenery if it's an airport that you want to go to a lot. Um, so yeah, there's just something to, to, to be aware of. As I said, there's a lot of airports out there that have changed and underwent and whatever like that. Um, so you can sort of just simply, um, so you can sort of filter out the parking errors and filter out the missing airport errors. Um, this will give you something, probably things that are a bit more important. So this then gives you um, uh, a few other errors. And these are errors that are um, to do more with the aircraft and things like that. And this is something again that um, yeah, there are certain uh, there are certain traffic files that are ready to, for aircraft to be assigned to them, but they haven't been assigned to them because it's still in in, in beta, uh, so it's still in early access. Uh, there'll be other ones where simply the AI, simply the AI engine um, of the ESP platforms goes, you know what, that's too long, or that that's that's too long, or that that's not long enough for you for you to be able to fly that far. So it sort of will go, you know what, that's just no, you can't do that anymore. So it sort of says, or it says you need to have uh, more time to be able to do that. So it's that's something that is probably worth passing on to the devs at the moment and gives you an idea you also you also get some information here again it's all in the in the manual where you can actually see exactly which part of the traffic file um, of the traffic database is actually causing the error as well uh, so we can uh, get rid of that and as I said you can filter out those ones and then you can filter out just the ones that are just missing um, and other destinations for, for example yeah in the sim uh, it has a limitation where the start and end airports that you're sending your aircraft to must be at least 10 miles apart if they're less than that then it won't do it so there you go that's random no i'm actually curious to see what that what traffic file is so you can sort of double click on that number there right click and go click, go to flight plan uh and it's for the avianca apparently that's less than 10 miles that looks more than 10 miles to me in Colombia. there you go hmm and that's the kind of stuff that you'd be passing back to um, the devs to get them to work on and do stuff like that. So that's essentially, in a nutshell, how to actually combine, how to compile your traffic uh, files and get yourself started. So if you just wanted to get up and go, this is pretty much, that's it, pretty much you're ready to go. You've got your sim, it drops it into your simulator ready to go, uh, and then you're ready to just fire up your sim and get going. Now, before we do that, if, if you are interested, so you can either skip forward now um, uh, to, uh, to to further into the video to actually see what it's like and we can see it in, in, uh, inside the sim, or um, you can stick with me as we explore some of the other features of Traffic Global and see what we can see and uh, have a look at some of the stuff that you can do now, some of the things that are hinted at and some of the pitfalls that you might want to be aware of. So the first one, of course, is we're going to go back to the AI fleet. Now, as I said, there is, as we saw on the home sort of thing here, there is 1,581 AI aircraft that ship with this. 
that's a lot of AI, but you can also add your own stuff. Um, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the Aircraft Explorer. So the Aircraft Explorer um, goes through, allows you to see all these uh, content that's currently been added in. Uh, and you can actually go through, have a look at it, see what's available, have a preview um, of the liveries that are here. Again, not all liveries are finished yet. Not all liveries have been uh, shipped to us yet. Uh, some of them are, we are still waiting on. Uh, so some of them will appear as blank textures. Some will simply not be there at all. But it gives you uh, an idea of some of the stuff that's there. Um, go through, as I said, there's a wide range of aircraft here. Um, the G5 military one is interesting. So we there looks like there will be at least some military stuff in there, but none of the textures are actually available yet. So they sort of, uh, they will hopefully see some stuff there. It looks, looks, like, it looks like none of the uh, G5s are available at the moment or the private jets. So it looks like private jets are uh, not here yet, but they are coming. Uh, there we go. All right, we'll have to go back to something else. What else have we got? Um, RJ100, there we are. Okay, so we've got an RJ100 there. Um, so yeah, there's a whole heap of different liveries in there for all the aircraft all sit there and coming through. So these are all uh, things that are provided to us. And uh, you just make sure you've got the load texture preview button checked and you'll be able to see what the texture is here. Uh, for those who are used to dealing with liveries, the load just loads as a DDS preview, so which is always flipped, uh, so it's uh, DDS is always inverted. Um, to make it easier to read, you can actually sort of click the flip texture button here, which makes it look like um, a bit easier for you to read as a uh, as an end user. So, uh, But a lot of us who do delivery work, we're used to seeing them back to front, so we, I, I don't even notice it anymore as I mentally do it. But anyway, moving on. Uh, it also gives you information about the aircraft, so sort of, you know, know um, what it's, it's uh, cruise um, you now it's um, it's supposed to give you a lot of information about here this doesn't seem to actually work at the moment uh, it doesn't seem to show all the correct details so I'm a bit perplexed about what this all means but I'm sure it will become clear as time moves on now a couple of things that I like I'm um, interested in about the top here as well now we've got an import export couple of buttons here as well now the intention appears to be where you can actually sort of um, yeah we, we obviously you, we can see here as well that you can um, you can edit aircraft parameters so you can sort of say yeah what it's um, minimum altitude is cruising altitude maximum cruising altitude is minimum maximum range all that kind of stuff ramps uh, all the basic anybody who's used traffic files before is just things that they're actually used to that information is all here for all of the fleet uh, it's just there's a lot of stuff in here um, now what so you can actually go through you can edit these details and then click the save button down here and we'll actually do that so if you change the minimum altitude to 1220 so the minimum cruising altitude will be 12,000 feet and then we click save change down here but we are not going to do that we're just going to leave that uh, the way it is cruise aim uh, now this is the cruise speed is for um, true um, true ground speed uh, true ground speed not airspeed just so you know Right, so that's the uh, AI fleet information sort of um, parameters there. Now, what you can also do as well is uh, you can also do the, uh, we can see the add livery and modify add airline details here. So what you can do is you can actually add an airline. Now, um, what I'm actually done here is you can, I'm actually going to uh, add this here. Okay. So I'm just so I'm literally just going to I just copied this in here before, but I'm going to add this in. So now this is a real airline in Australia. Um, Top Express, country Australia, carrier name, create carrier. Right. All right. Toll aviation. So, oh, I created that twice. There's no delete button. That's the only problem here. There's no delete button. Uh, okay, so we've got the carrier there. So you can add your own carrier. Now, what you can also do is you can add liveries. Now, the other thing they've done is that Just Flight have made, um, they have made the um, paint kits available uh, to us, to everyone. So you can actually um, do your own re repaints um, for this. Now, where are we? Toll, 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 toll. Now the interesting part here is that we've added the airline, but it won't actually appear here yet. So, hmm, 
looks like uh, this may not work um, for the moment, but it gives us a hint that it is coming. So you can add liveries to an existing carrier if you do. So if we go, if we instead of adding it to Toll, uh, we'll add it to Tiger. Let's add it to. Let's try adding it to Tiger, shall we? Tiger Air Australia. Yep, cool. So variant name Toll Cargo. Uh, da -da 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 -da. There we go. Uh, so it's an ATR. Da -da -da. Parking type gate. Dun dun dun. Yep, that looks good. So it'll pre populate a lot of this stuff by itself for you. And then you just simply go add livery to aircraft. Now, just quickly, uh, what I did with that, let me just quickly show you that. So what I did simply is I simply created the livery inside of uh, inside Photoshop and exported it to uh, in the paint directory as texture.textured.tollau, which is simply the two base files there. What I did is I copied that fold texture folder into the fleet ATR42, so I've copied it in there. And then uh, when we did the uh, click the uh, add livery to aircraft button, uh, what it actually did is it installed, uh, it added in all this extra stuff for us in it as well automatically. Um, so that the actual sim would be able to read it. Um, so it's really cool. So as I said, there's a lot of hints about stuff that's going on here and working. Um, it's still, as I said, it's still very much a work in progress. So this is uh, not a finished product yet. Uh, and it is going through. And we can see here, I've just opened up the aircraft config file. Uh, we can see that it's been added in so um, it's it's interesting it's something that is uh, obviously as I said it, it, as I said it's this is a early access product so it's um it's, you would have noticed that they've got the bug of the uh, you know create the airline part but we can add our own textures so pretty cool for that so I'm actually going to go back now and have a look and see if we can see it here let's have a look uh, toll cargo yep there we are and we've got the uh, got the complete with the livery there all done so you can add your own stuff in, so that's great to see. Um, we've going to have a lot of, as I said, there's work in progress. I know that there are plans to be able to, you know, edit details about the aircraft, be able to import and export your own fleet, and sort of share it with other people. Um, so it's going to be. There's a lot of stuff that still needs to be worked on. A lot of, but a lot of potential here and a lot of promise. So, very interesting work that we've got that we're seeing here go on at the moment. Um, now, of course, you what you'd need to do is that if you did actually want to have those um, sort of go, go into your traffic and stuff like that, what you'd need to do is that you'd actually need to do what, something this my AI flights, and you'd actually have to sort of uh, create your own stuff as well. And that's something that's still sort of a work in progress at the moment. Um, now, I've had a bit of a my bit of a muck around with it, but it's um sort of very much a bit of a um, a, uh, a, a yeah, very much a work in progress at the moment. So it it can be done, but it's a bit clunky. So there you go. So just um, there's some details in the manual for if you do want to give it a shot yourself, and some great reading online if you do want to do want to have a look at it yourself. All right. Other than that, we've got some tro uh, global diagnostics as well. Um, we can go through here. So one of the common things that people are complaining about. Is that they're missing traffic um, completely. Um, just make sure that at least um, when you're troubleshooting and then during this sort of testing initial phase, uh, make sure you don't put in any other traffic files in there at the moment. At least, uh, or you know, sort of you know, swap them out if you um, if you do while using Traffic Global to test it. Uh, a lot of common uh, common issues is is that people are running sort of you know people sort of drop other AI traffic in here with Traffic Global and it's causing causing conflicts and things like that. Uh, you can if you are concerned or having some issues, you can actually go through do some scans. It'll actually sort of check with BGLs and automatically turn them, uh, enable them or disable them as you need to. Otherwise, you've got some options here uh, at the back end as well, which gives you a chance so you can actually, uh, you can rerun that setup wizard that we saw at the start. So if you do install another one of your sims, you can go through and actually rerun the setup wizard. Um, or if you didn't activate it and link it with a sim to start with, you can actually do it again later on after as well.
The last one is a couple of options that you get here as well. So the different type of map that's uh, displayed uh, when you're looking at the uh, route overview, um, the aircraft as well. So whether you get whether you have moving jetways or not. So you can turn off moving jetways if you want. So um, by default, it uses the it, it uses makes use of both default moving jetways and also uh, SODE moving jetways if they are at the airport that the AI traffic enables to. If you don't want them to be able to, if you don't want the AI aircraft to activate the jetways, you uncheck this, click process, and that'll turn that feature off. For you. you also have the ability to use Spotty the plane spotter um, if you do want to have him added in so you can sort of wander around and watch your AI traffic flying around uh, you can click him again to click him to enable him click process and off you go and he becomes a uh, selectable uh, aircraft type so very similar to the idea of, uh, of Bob from Orbix or the avatar mode from prepared uh, personally though I just like using um, uh, chase plane uh, for that one so there you go all right, so that pretty much showcases um, the different features that are set that we see at the moment inside of uh, Traffic Global. Now, as I said, at the moment, this is very much a uh, an early access product. So there are some bugs. So if you are purchasing it, please understand that you are purchasing a a early access product. There are going to be bugs. Please responsibly report them. Um, there are several known bugs. Read up on them at the uh, early access forums. A lot of great information there. A um, couple of other things to be aware of. Um, this is very much a common thing uh, for a just flight early access products. Don't really know about anybody else doing this one, uh, but it's something that uh, those of us who have Air, 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 Air 2 uh, early access, uh, which has been early access now, I think it's what, two? two years now that's been early access for um, every sort of month or so you have the um, it's sort of got an inbuilt time close sort of kill switch on the software um, where after about a month or so you will need to download an updated version so just be aware of that one um, so make sure so if you suddenly if your traffic global app stops working that's why you probably just got to grab the update but uh, yeah keep in keep in touch and keep an eye on the website for uh, all the updates coming through all right, let's just jump back into uh, the uh, in, back into prepared, and we'll have another look. Oh, sorry. All right, a uh, couple of things before we jump into the sim. I just want to correct what I just said as well earlier as well. So um, with the, it is something that I did notice as well, and again comes back to what I also reminded you guys at the start of this video. When you make any major changes, like when we first installed it open this open the application and close it because that's how stuff gets saved so you know how we saw the things were uh, i could see toll on the air on the uh on the actual sort of uh airline thing but i couldn't actually find it when i was going to add a delivery yeah so that's because it uh it saves but not doesn't save correctly um and we'll go show i'll show you in a sec where, where it saves as well um so it is there that's all good so what i can do now is i can now go back to the add livery um so we selected our toll aviation, top it in there. So we've got our course, it automatically populates our call sign, parking codes, uh, everything that we know from that one. Um, I'm just changing, it's picking up my computer. Never mind, we 24. Um, yep, yeah, all good. Puts everything in that we're used to seeing uh, with our parking codes, call signs, everything that we're looking for. So yep, yeah, cool, done. So that's all you do it. Then we go click our add livery to aircraft and it does it and adds it to the uh, to the actual uh, ATR42. So there you go. It does work, but you just, whenever you make major changes like this, you need to close the app in order for it to sort of be able to reload and re reconfigure itself because uh, I can, and also I will show you why that. So this is, as I said, we talked about when we were talking about installing um, content, it would install things in different places. So the first one is thing is where you choose where you install the main uh, the main application. So that's the traffic app.exe. So that's all its sort of core files that it uses to actually run itself. Um, you can download, as I said, download the install the paint kits for all of the aircraft that ship with it, which is always great to have. Uh, and you get the traffic global fleet, which is all the stuff that comes with it. Um, and as in where you add in your additional uh, liveries, you copy them in as well. So uh, just quickly showing you, I said so originally it was in the, I showed that to you before, it was in the paint kits one, copied it into the global fleet, found it using the traffic global app to install it. All good. Now, what it also does though is it does also install stuff into your My Documents folder. Uh, now, what it's installed in here is installed this information here. So this this is your uh, README file. So it's a little bit a README file and sort of manual as well. It gives you some information about airport facilities. So that's a, some basic scenery files that it ships with, which sort of gives some basic um, uh, Africa some uh, adds some basic stuff to default airports. Uh, has a compiler, so this is all the sort of tools and database builders that it does, countries, regions, airport data, and a test compile. So you can do a test compile if you when you're doing your own traffic setups, you can do a test ones there. 
look up file. This is sort of like the, this is the part that I was saying before where it gets added in. So this is simply Excel spreadsheets that the app uses to look through uh, the different uh, airport, the aircraft that you add in and also the different airlines that you add in. So um, you have to actually sort of restart the app in order for you to be able to see any changes you've made to that to, for the uh, other parts that's important to have. Uh, schedules is all the schedules that it has for the traffic global database as well as your AI flights you do. Um, if you want, you can actually, if you, you're comfortable with doing and how the foot syntax is, you can actually edit these directly in the spreadsheet, save the spreadsheet and then reload them and export them into the app as well. Uh, and as I said, uh, tools here. So this is where sort of like the GA information is here. So this is sort of the 25, 50, and 100 uh, percent. Um, so it's always you know low, medium, high uh, of your traffic, uh, and then some information about some static um, preload types as well, and some stuff specifically for prepared v4 injection. So that's cool. Speaking of prepared v4 injection, um, so the developer has uh, for. For FSX and um, so sort of traditionally the only way to actually install sort of uh, traffic files to drop link directly into your main uh, simulators, the main directory into uh, scenario, uh, scenery, world, scenery folder is where you have to drop the BGL into. Now prepared v3 introduced a new way of installing um, and, and adding add-on content um, but it has it looks like it's really only but very few developers took advantage of it in v3 but in v4 people are, uh, developers are starting to take advantage of it and i'm glad to see that developer is at least um, doing it for um, uh, for uh, for, for v4 i'm hoping that he'll also put it in for v3 because at the moment v3 and fsx are dropping it directly into the sim uh the old-fashioned sort of cheat way um well the only way you can do it for fsx but v4 is doing in here and so this essentially puts it in here and this means that if you upgrade your um if you upgrade your actual version of prepared or change or modify it in any way your content will still be here it's actually unaffected um, so it's a really cool neat little way of doing it as uh, the platform gets updated and uh, these are the BGL files that it creates as I said this is the part one part two of the database the uh, the, the, the GA traffic file and a couple of other BGL files that actually go with the my flights one for your own custom AI flights uh, and the global airlines one so this is more just for the uh, information for the AFCAD files and stuff like that so um, yeah, I just wanted to point this out that the fact that you know developer is making use of that one. Hopefully, he will also make use of it in for the V3 instead of doing the brute force method of dropping it directly into the sim. Uh, we'll hopefully you see him using taking advantage of this one as well. All right, enough of that. Let's jump back into the sim and give my closing final thoughts. So we've gone through the process of installing our AI. Our AI is now happily flying uh, around in our sim and we're getting to experience uh, traffic and stuff like that. So we can see it now, it's all working and that's great to have. So what what are my thoughts about, uh, about Traffic Global at the moment? So bottom line, um, this is like I, I I really appreciate traffic. You know, traffic either is something that I've had mixed feelings about um, over the years, and um, it, it I, I've sort of had a bit of a love hate relationship with it. But traffic global for me, it, it in the end of the, and, and AI sort of traffic in general at the end of the day actually sort of really does sort of create a huge sense of immersion um, in the, our actual flight simulators, and it's really great to see that you know we've got a, a an amazing sort of uh, good amount of quality uh, amazing quality sort of coming through here even for an early access product I mean it's still the quality is still pretty damn outstanding and and it does sort of build on the legacy of actually sort of having uh, the, the the previous just flight traffic products what are you what are you sort of what are we sort of getting you're definitely getting that real feel the definitely makes your airports feel very alive um, with the fact that you know we do have things like that now are there bugs with it absolutely um, this is actually one of them right here um, so in some cases you will find that the animated jetways that you know the AI traffic will continue will, will trigger um, the positions of the doors on the AI models are sort of weird places which means that you know the, the the scenery will sort of try and compensate that by extending the jetway out, and then you get things like this happening. So, are there bugs? Absolutely, there are bugs with that. But this is an early access product, so we're, you're expecting to actually find them. Now, it does that take away from the experience? I don't think so. As I said, it's an early access product. It's a product that is is, is in active development. We've got a lot of things going on with it. 
Um, but it still yeah, provides a lot in the actual platform at the moment. There is a lot absolutely here. Um, now, a couple of points to sort of note here about this at the moment is that this is very much, at the moment at least, um, this is very much a product that is geared towards the European um, and US market, absolutely. Um, so the vast majority of the content at the moment, and as I said, this is I'm very stressful of, of the using the phrase at the moment here, is European and US content. Uh, so you will find that you know US airports and, and European airports will be populated with lots and lots of AI traffic and lots of options available to you. But um, your more remote airports in sort of you know um, in sort of you know the Middle East or in um, South, South America are going to be fairly limited with their traffic options. Now that is changing. Um, the the developers have uh, sort of gone through and said that they are getting more schedules on board. They are getting more uh, models on board for the future for various airports. But the fact that this works out of the box with um, both default scenery and um, uh, third party scenery and gives a reflection on sort of current scheduling um, of a lot of airlines is actually really, really positive. And as I said, like the quality of deliveries and the models is actually really, really good. Now, I mean, I mean, I, I don't know sort of, you know, this is going, especially compared to the old world of AI stuff. Um, this is pretty damn awesome. Like, yeah, um, so, Cool story. Sorry, just going to go off on a tangent for a second here. Um, the, I'm showing this off. This is um, uh, Cadence, so Denver International, um, Denver International Airport. Um, so, cool story. This actual gate, um, A53. Um, I actually walked in to uh, to Cadence from this gate on an MD80. Just saying. And there's one parked here at the gate there. That's so cool. Anyway, moving on. All right, okay, sorry, moving on. Uh, back to the review. So, um, are there liveries missing? Yes. Are there, um, so are they using sort of placeholder liveries at the moment for some airlines? Yes. Uh, does it have every airline imaginable and every schedule imaginable? Not yet. As I said, it's a work in progress. It is in development. But you've got a lot of content supported here. Uh, and stuff, and the the updates are coming fairly regularly at the moment. It's uh, so we're aver we're averaging at least one update a month. Uh, we got two in June, um, so this is the um, this, this is the, the the one that came out at the end of June. So we're getting regular updates, getting regular content. Um, they're very active in the development development space now. As I said at the moment, this is fully compatible with um, F6 uh, F6 F6 Steam Edition uh, and prepared versions one, two, three, and four. Um, there is plans to have it compatible with Flight SimWorld um, as well, and um, as I was sort of alluding to earlier, when I was talking to the guys over at Just Flight, they've sort of said that they are looking at potentially bringing it over to X-Plane in the future. They're not ruling it out, they're not guaranteeing it, but they're not ruling it out either, which is interesting. Um, so yeah, I, I think that AI traffic is, a, is an underestimated part of the ESP sims that actually really is important to the immersion factor. And I think a product like Traffic Global really sort of fills a niche that um, that really adds to that realism, adds to that in immersion of the sense of having it if you, um, if you so that's how you want to fly. It's not for everyone. Uh, that's why this product's not for everyone and such like that. But given the fact that you know, this is, uh, but this is very highly detailed, a lot of work's gone into this and I think it's uh, very, uh, very useful. Now, We've gone through the process today of having a look at how to set it up, how to install it at the moment, and we can see it working here, both we've seen it working at default airports and we've seen it working at aftermarket airports. Um, I don't really have any major concerns about it. I think at the moment, as I said, the product's in a pretty good state, even for an early access product. There are some bugbears with it. Um, a couple of the aircraft, when they sort of come into the landing, sort of do do some weird things. Um, I think some of the lighting is going to go on the aircraft models needs to be the lighting effects needs to be redone, particularly for prepared, uh, prepared versions. But that's uh, again a work in progress. But again, overall, as I said, for an early access product, it's still looking pretty damn awesome at the moment. Some of the animations on the models also seem to be a bit lacking. Um, flap animations seem to be not working so well on a lot of the uh, models. Um, but again. Uh, the devs that have sort of noticed that and are working on it. So, hmm. so overall thoughts. I think that this is a great way of adding, adding a bit more immersion into your sim, um, particularly if you're wanting to sort of have the experience of uh, like real world traffic and stuff like that. Um, 
it's you get a lot of bang for your buck in this product. You, you really do. You get um, sort of the you know, current schedules, sort of you know, sort of start of twenty eighteen schedules um, for a lot of airlines globally, and with more airlines being added um, all the time with each with each additional update, as well as actually getting um, some very frame rate friendly models uh, and uh, the ability to sort of you know, populate airports around the world. Downsides is that, it's, ironically, some of the downsides of it are actually because it's almost too good. Because as I was alluding to, again, discussing in the actual how to sort of set it up, um, a lot of the airport, a lot, there are a lot of airports that have either changed their codes um, since uh, the databases in uh, prepared and FSX sort of were created, um, and you know, or the airports that simply didn't exist beforehand. Have a look at this one, airport as this aircraft as it flies by us. There we go. Cool. Um, so yeah, a lot of things have changed. So yeah, often it's it's underestimated by the fact that it is so good because a lot of um, airports that are in the default sort of database either don't have space for AI traffic um, or simply you know um, just didn't exist when the database was made. But overall, as I said, it's still a really good looking product, um, and I think if you're wanting to have fill your skies with um, traffic that is not um, that is not the sort of the, you know, the generic default stuff, um, and you don't want to have to spend hours and hours and hours and sort of researching and and, and and that's probably the other big thing about this is this is a time saver. So there's a lot of content here that you know you could probably do yourself. I mean, the traffic tools are available for you to create your own AI flight plans if you wish. But to be able to sort of get your own AI flight plans and get the models together and stuff like that, that's going to take you a long time. Um, and that's sort of again, as you, you sort of in a, in a way you're sort of getting the convenience here. So there you go. So I think for that alone, um, if you are wanting the uh, the traffic experience, and that's going to be useful. All right, so that does round out my early access review of Just Flight's Traffic Global. So if you are wanting to jump on board and uh, give this one a shot and try it in early access and be part of the development and shape the development of this package, then you can pick this up now from Just Flight's website uh, and become involved. Uh, otherwise, uh, if you're not wanting to be part of the early access and wait till it's a bit further along the development, then just keep an eye on it uh, and wait for it to become a bit more mature as it goes along. All right, folks, well, as I round out this review, I do want to say once again, thank you very much to the wonderful team over at Just Flight for providing me with the review copy of Traffic Global today. And uh, as always, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying these videos and want to see more. And of course, as always, you can catch up with me on all the things I'm up to between videos by finding me on Facebook and on Twitter. Just search NovaWing24. All right, folks, thanks very much for watching. Take care, safe skies to all, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now. Thank you.